I don't like this thing! I could drop you like a bag of dirt. I'm going to hell! Elaine is the meanest, angriest, and most vicious character on Seinfeld. But she didn't start out that way. She's actually pretty nice and happy at the beginning of the series. We actually get to watch her gradual change into the violent, miserable character we all love. And just die already. Die! So what caused this transformation? Well, I think there are little hints in each season that really tell the story. And I have theories that I've been sitting on for 10 years that I finally want to share. Seinfeld is a TV sitcom from the 90s about a group of friends living in New York City. Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer. They are all kind of the worst. They are selfish, immature, petty, and cruel, each in their own way. At the time, it was pretty uncommon for unambiguously bad people to be the protagonists of a TV show. We see it a lot more now, and Seinfeld was one of the pioneers of that trend. Jerry, George, and Kramer are kind of established as these morally dubious characters from the very beginning, but you don't get the sense that they particularly find pleasure in causing harm. It just tends to happen all the time because they're stupid and impulsive and can't really help themselves. But Elaine, on the other hand, is much more calculated and intentionally vicious, and she definitely enjoys it. So let's figure out how she got there. So Elaine is a smart, assertive woman in her early 30s. And when I say smart, I mean she literally has a genius IQ. I just ran into Monica. You know what my IQ is? 151. Elaine is also characterized as progressive and socially aware. She's an animal rights advocate. You don't care that innocent, defenseless animals are being tortured so that you can look good? Can we talk about this some other time? She's a feminist. She's pro-choice. You should never order pizza from Taquinas. Why not? Because the owner contributes a lot of money to those fanatical anti-abortion groups. She's a pretty big contrast to Jerry, George, and Kramer, none of whom really care about much outside of themselves. I think the main reason Elaine even started hanging out with them is because they were kind of a distraction from her mundane life. She's the only one of the group that has a steady 9 to 5 job as a copy editor for a publishing company, which isn't the most exciting work. Mainly, I just think she likes hanging out with Jerry. And Jerry, in my opinion, is a huge part of Elaine's downfall. So let's talk about Jerry real quick. Jerry is a professional comedian, and he's never had a traditional job, so he's kind of out of touch with the grind of the typical working adult. I wouldn't know anything about that. Join my Patreon, by the way. He's the type of guy who thinks his shit doesn't stink. He doesn't take much of anything very seriously. Well, I don't think we should see each other anymore. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> what? No, it's fine, no problem. I'll meet somebody else. Outside of constantly telling jokes, Jerry's life seems to mostly revolve around trying to get women to have sex with him, which he is admittedly quite successful at. But then, without fail, Jerry either quickly loses interest in these women or does something horrible that causes them to flee. And it always revolves around some very minor, petty issue that he has, which makes me think that he's really just looking for any excuse to sabotage the relationship. How come you eat your peas one at a time? What's the hurry? Elaine is one of Jerry's many ex-girlfriends, but they've decided to remain friends. And this is a big deal because Jerry dates dozens of women on this show and finds a way to ruin almost all of his relationships pretty much immediately. Hi. Hello. <laughs> the fact that he enjoyed Elaine's company so much to remain close friends with her is extremely out of character for him. If you only watched the first season or two, you'd be forgiven for thinking the whole show is going to be about Jerry and Elaine's relationship. It's definitely not. But we will soon see how Jerry's entitlement and pettiness begins to influence Elaine. A ceremony. A celebration of life. Shouldn't you be out on a ledge somewhere? I love you. Trying to destroy us. Shouldn't you be out on a ledge somewhere? There's an early episode where Jerry and Elaine try a friends with benefits arrangement. Why shouldn't we be able to do that once in a while if we want to? I know! But Elaine can't really handle it because she still has feelings for Jerry and she wants more out of the relationship. So I think we should just forget the whole deal and go back to being friends. I can't do it. You what? I can't do that. So they actually end up trying to date again. Very briefly, they break up off camera. What happened? 
don't know. We decided we don't really work as a couple. One of the debates that Seinfeld fans like to have is over whether Elaine and Jerry had this unspoken love the whole time. Larry David, co-creator of the show, was always opposed to the idea of Jerry and Elaine being in love. Seinfeld was designed to be a show about people with no empathy who never grow or learn anything. But he was forced to write this episode where Jerry and Elaine briefly get back together in order to appease network executives. And because of that decision, an entire headcanon was born. Sorry, Larry. So here's my headcanon. Jerry clearly doesn't care for Elaine. He shows that on multiple occasions. Jerry, I think your friend needs some help over there. You know, the only way to really help her is to just let her be. <laughs> Don't worry, Jerry, I can manage these bags. Really, I'm fine. Okay, oh, my side burns growing a little. Can we rest here a second? Yeah, I guess. But he clearly does like having her around. I don't think Jerry loves Elaine so much as he loves that Elaine loves him. And I think Elaine obviously loves Jerry, at least at the beginning. If Larry wasn't writing her as loving Jerry, Julia Louis-Dreyfus was definitely playing her like that. There's the episode I mentioned before, but there's also subtle stuff like how Elaine always wants to be close to Jerry. We can exchange keys so we can come in and out. Oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> All the time. Or like, look at the way that she smiles at him. Hello, Jerry. Hello. But ultimately, Elaine accepts the fact that she and Jerry are just gonna be friends, and they never really try again to be anything else. Well, sort of. I'm asking Elaine to marry me. We will talk about that a little bit later. But they are very close friends. You can tell they're super comfortable around each other. I never really noticed this watching the show growing up, but Elaine and Jerry are always together. Elaine is always at Jerry's apartment. They're always doing stuff together. They call each other all the time. They eat out of each other's food, which is significant by the way, because Jerry is famously germaphobic. What's wrong with the belt? Uh, at the movies last night, I went to the bathroom and I unbuckled a little wildly and the buckle kind of banged against the side of the urinal, so that's it. So yeah, Elaine likes hanging out with Jerry and really only spends time with George and Kramer through Jerry. The few times Elaine is left alone with either George or Kramer, it's super awkward because they don't have much to talk about. I don't think she would normally hang out with those guys. In fact, she ends up pretty much hating George, which we'll talk about in a minute. But at the same time, she seems to want to be a part of the group. She even participates in activities that she's not really into just so she can tag along. Jerry and George called me from this limo and they said we're all going to the Dick Spoles game. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I don't even like basketball. And I kind of think it's to impress Jerry. It's probably controversial for me to reduce one of the most beloved female TV characters of all time into basically a pick me girl, but there's a lot of evidence in the show that Elaine really wants Jerry's approval. Well, we hardly read anything. It was funny. <laughs> Was funny. She laughs at all his jokes. She believes everything he says, even if he's being obviously ridiculous. Lost his temper and he was pushing me up against the car. So I went to a karate stance. <laughs> you know karate. I know a little. And remember, she's supposed to be extremely smart. That's not headcanon, that's a detail they added. So she hangs out with Jerry and his friends all the time now and starts to notice their antics. Jerry is constantly sabotaging his relationships. So, where were we? I was just leaving. Right, you were leaving. <laughs> George is always running some kind of insecure scheme. So, hold on, they think you're handicapped. Yeah, 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 well, because of the cave. You should see the bathroom they gave me. And Kramer is usually involved in some kind of sketchy or illegal business venture. I got two beauties right here. Come on, Father, check it out. All right. At first, Elaine just watches from afar and teases the others when their plans inevitably blow up in their faces. She wants you to like her. Yes, yeah, she wants me to like her if she likes me, but she doesn't like me. <laughs> I don't know what your parents did to you. But soon enough, Elaine starts to get involved in the guy's nonsense here and there. But she definitely does it just for the thrill. I think she's just bored. Hey, what do you think? Hey, I love a good caper. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? A caper. Huh? You'll do it? What the heck? Like there's an episode where George gets fired and he wants to get revenge on his boss and he convinces Elaine to join in on a pretty fucked up plan. I'm gonna slip him a Mickey. <laughs> He's got this big party coming up. He's been looking forward to this for months. This is gonna destroy the whole thing. What if you destroy him? No, 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 don't worry. It's perfectly safe. I researched it. He'll get a little woozy. 
He might kill over. I would say that in general, Seinfeld holds up, mostly because we know that the characters are monsters, so it's not that shocking when they do something horrible. But there are a few awkward situations that don't really age that well, and this is probably one of them. I think Elaine gets a little addicted to the thrill, actually. She starts to willingly involve herself in more and more shenanigans as the show goes on. For example, there's an episode where Jerry believes that someone has stolen a statue out of his apartment and plots with George and Kramer to get it back. At first, Elaine tells them to let it go. What, are you gonna go fight him? Why don't you just forget it? No. But by the end of the episode, she's fully on their side. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> Why don't we just throw a Molotov cocktail through their window? And it's affecting her in an interesting way. There's another episode where Elaine is dating this guy and she ends up hating him for literally no reason. Jerry, you cannot imagine how much I hate this guy. And he hasn't even done anything. It's the situation. He's a wonderful guy, but I hate his guts. I think she's gotten so used to the schemes that she's forgetting how to navigate normal, drama-free relationships. Now, if you've never watched Seinfeld, it probably sounds like I've painted Elaine as like this mild-mannered woman with a crush on her ex, and that's not totally accurate. Elaine is actually very assertive and strong-willed. She's the type of person who stands up for herself and what she believes in and isn't afraid to tell you what's on her mind. Should you be smoking? Does it bother you? You're pregnant. Elaine. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but she does have a bit of a temper and is prone to kind of lose it sometimes. But at this point of the show, whenever Elaine freaks out, it's usually for an understandable reason. Like when she's forced to sleep in a super uncomfortable bed in a hot room. <laughs> this bar is breaking my bed. Or when she gets lost in a parking garage and no one will help her find the car. That's right, go. Go on to your dumbbells. Go work on your pecs and your lats. We're all really impressed. It's a far cry from the ridiculous pettiness of her friends. There's actually not that much Elaine screen time in season four, and maybe that can be explained by her spending more time behind the scenes trying to get her shit together. Before now, we only saw Elaine working around the cubicles at the publishing company, but now we see she's upgraded to an office and even has her own assistant. Also, most of the time we see Elaine now, she's dressed more professionally, which implies that she has a more serious role at her job. But it seems that Elaine might be a bit overworked. Whenever they show her office, her desk is always completely covered with stacks of papers and folders. Although she's probably behind because she spends more time on the phone with Jerry than actually working. But she's understandably a little bit stressed from work and unfortunately that stress is multiplied by other unfortunate events that start to happen in her life. So you know what? I got served with papers today. Ping is suing me. You're not leaving. Oh. God, I'll tell you how things are going. I am getting kicked out of my apartment! Well. Come on, how was your date? How shall I put this? Well, just put it. He took it out. And you can tell it's getting to her. In the first few seasons, Elaine is much happier and smiling all the time. Good morning, good morning. Have you ever gotten up first thing in the morning and felt that it's just great to be alive, that every breath is a gift of sweet life from above? But now she mostly seems exhausted and tense. And that temper I mentioned is still there, but now we see it come out for more petty and trivial reasons. She has a shorter fuse. You don't think that someone having a baby warrants an exclamation point? I just thought that you'd be a little more excited about a friend of mine having a baby. Oh. Hey, do you believe I got Happy New Year today? It's February. I once got Happy New Year in March. <laughs> this is disgusting. It's pathetic. <laughs> Isn't it obvious this mannequin looks exactly like me? <laughs> Did you just roll your eyes at him? Because let me tell you something, if anybody should be rolling their eyes, it is me at him about you. Elaine. <laughs> Jerry even comments on it. Never even seen you. Gotta kinda envy that. You know, you've been developing 
quite the acid tongue lately. Of course, Jerry doesn't really care because he doesn't care about much of anything, but that actually works for Elaine. She at least knows that Jerry will never judge her, at least not any more than anyone else. He just simply doesn't care enough, or so Elaine thinks. And at this point, it seems like Jerry is kind of the only enjoyable relationship in Elaine's life. In earlier seasons, we see and hear about several of Elaine's other friends. She clearly had a life outside of this group, but as time goes on, Elaine starts to pretty much spend all of her free time with Jerry and thus also George and Kramer. The only problem with someone like Jerry being your only friend is that he, as we know, is extremely petty. It's only a matter of time before Jerry finds some minor issue to get worked up over. You fake? On occasion. And the guy never knows? Yeah. How could he not know that? You didn't know. Give me another shot. You mean? Yes. No, I don't think. Come on! This bothers Jerry so much that it barely nearly ends his friendship with Elaine. Thanks for a really fabulous evening. Oh, uh, what, you're upset? Yes, I'm upset. Can't you tell? No, I can't. Maybe you're faking. <laughs> But Elaine is so invested in this dude that she's willing to agree to his ridiculous request just so he will continue being friends with her. All right, let's go. I'll give you half an hour. Are you serious? Look, Jerry, we have to have sex to save the friendship. Now, I'm not an expert on feminism, but I think that's pretty cringe. My theory is that Elaine's life is kind of a mess right now, and Jerry's friendship, despite how much of a doofus he is, is pretty much the only thing she has to look forward to. And by the end of season six, Elaine has hit kind of a low point. She loses her job at the publishing company, and then she gets another job that she absolutely hates, and then she gets fired from that one too. You're fired, Elaine. Goodbye. Can't you see what's happened? I've become George. Don't say that. It's true. I'm George. I'm George. Okay, now let's talk about George. Now, I said that Elaine becomes the most evil person in the group, but George is a strong number two. I mean, he literally drugged his boss just for kicks. George is a miserable, self-righteous man with absolutely no integrity. Oh, don't go in. Rachel's getting undressed. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's lazy and irritable, he can't keep a job, he's just kind of altogether unpleasant. He's just as petty and manipulative as Jerry is, except he's way more angry about it. Unlike Jerry, he seems very self-aware about how pathetic he is. Every decision I've ever made in my entire life has been wrong. <laughs> my life is the complete opposite of everything I want it to be. But he justifies his actions because he considers himself a victim of an unfair society. I just can't believe the way people are. What is it with humanity? What kind of a world do we live in? The reason I don't think he is the most evil is because the man is clearly crying for help. I'm not happy. <laughs> Me neither. I've never been happy. At least I convinced him to act like that so that you would think I was funnier. That's how disturbed I am. George is the definition of hurt people hurt people. He doesn't have the most loving or supportive parents. That's not a boat. So who says we have to sit in the boat? I didn't take the subway all the way to New York to sit at a table like that. Why did you take the subway to be in a drafty restaurant? Now, George, what do you want to know about your childhood? Actually, I think I'm pretty clear on it. He was bullied in high school, and now he lashes out at everyone around him. You can tell that George genuinely desires a purpose for his life and a meaningful relationship, but he's ultimately too selfish and immature to really follow through with any of that. But one day, something clicks for George. I should do the opposite, I should. If every instinct you have is wrong, then the opposite would have to be right. <laughs> yes. I will do the opposite. I used to sit here and do nothing and regret it for the rest of the day. So now I will do the opposite and I will do something. My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. I'm Victoria, hi. This immediately pays off and George's life starts to improve tremendously, including him getting his dream job working for the New York Yankees. I gotta tell you, you are the complete opposite of every applicant we've seen. 
all for the glorification of your massive ego. Hire this man. <laughs> and all this happened around the same time that Elaine's life was falling apart, and she clearly resents George's success. I'm George. Throughout the series, you get a strong sense that Elaine doesn't really like George. Well, you could move in with my parents. <laughs> Was that the opposite of what you were going to say, or was that just your natural instinct? Rock climbing? <laughs> you need a boost to climb into your bed. Oh, yeah. I was wearing my slingback pumps. What are those? Ask your mother. You live with her now, don't you? <laughs> did you happen to speak to my friend George? As a matter of fact, I did. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, listen, you would be wise to keep your distance from him. Why? He seems harmless. Oh, he's not. He's very harmful. Well, David, the thing about George is that he's an idiot. <laughs> Which is fair, to be honest. He's not that likable of a person. Lots of people don't like George. What's the deal with your friend George? I don't know how you can hang out with that guy. We don't like you, George. But I don't think that's quite it. I think Elaine just doesn't respect George. See, George kind of represents everything Elaine has tried to avoid in her life. He's an underachiever, he's lazy, he's kind of sexist. Without mincing words, Elaine has always considered George inferior. And until this moment, their circumstances mostly reflected that. I think seeing George thrive despite his many terrible qualities was the beginning of the end for Elaine's psyche. Maybe there's something to that cynical, indifferent worldview that Jerry has. He doesn't try very hard or care about much, and things always seem to even out for him. Elaine, don't get too down. Everything will even out. See, I have two friends. You were up, he was down. Now he's up, you're down. You see how it all evens out for me? But there's still evidence that Elaine is desperately trying to cling on to her values. She got impregnated by her troglodytic half-brother and decided to have an abortion. You know, someday we're gonna get enough people in the Supreme Court to change that law. <laughs> Now there's something that aged poorly, or well, I guess you could say, because they called it. But Elaine is devastated by the combination of all her recent misfortune, her realization that Jerry doesn't care that much about their friendship, and her resentment towards George's success. That's the kind of thing that really weighs down on a person, and with enough pressure, they're eventually gonna crack. And Elaine does finally crack after an unpleasant interaction with some undeniably rude nail salon workers. I'll take you! In any other show, this scene would actually be kind of sad. Have you been crying? Yeah, you see, this is a woman, this is a manicure. Oh, no, no, it doesn't matter why. But in this moment of pain, Elaine finally finds some good fortune that will lead us right into the final three seasons of the show. Hear me? Yes. I'm Jay Peterman. I love doing retrospectives like this of the media that I loved growing up. And I also love watching other talented creators do the same thing. Another classic piece of 90s media is the perfect movie Jurassic Park, which my friend Lindsay Ellis did a great video about not too long ago that you should definitely check out. Have you read this book since you were like in the fourth grade or so? Because um, I hadn't. And I was a little taken aback by how it's, it's, it's kind of bad. That video is exclusively available on Nebula, our creator-owned streaming platform that helps people like me and Lindsay create the content that we want to make without necessarily having to deal with the stress of the YouTube algorithm. And Nebula just recently received its biggest update ever. The homepage has been completely redesigned to make it super easy to find the exact type of content you're interested in, whether it's news, science, culture, or something else. If that sounds cool, I can actually 
get you 40% off an annual Nebula subscription, which comes out to only $30 for a full year of excellent content. All you have to do is go to nebula.tv T1J and sign up, or just click the link in the description. If you use my link, that directly supports me, so that would be super appreciated. And big shout out to all of you that already watch and support my videos on Nebula. You guys are awesome. Now let's finish this story. We're about to get to the heel turn. Elaine gets a job writing for a fashion catalog owned by the mogul Jay Peterman, one of my favorite characters on the show, who I did not know until somewhat recently is a parody of a real person. I was too broke to know anything about high fashion, okay? Elaine would like to do well at this new job, but she's been having trouble sleeping due to a noisy dog in her apartment building. Again, more misfortune that's not really her fault. I can't sleep, I can't work. I mean, I just moved, I can't move again. What am I gonna do? What? What am I gonna do? But Elaine is at her wits end with this kind of stuff. She literally ran home crying in the rain not too long ago. She's fed up and finally willing to take a full step into the dark side. Well, there is something you can do. What if, Great Rob, I'll, I'll do anything. Well, what if there should be an unfortunate accident? <laughs> You're gonna rub out the dog? Uh-huh. What, you're considering this? I can't, wait a minute. I got it. We'll kidnap it. We'll kidnap the dog, we'll drop him off upstate, and this way he won't bother anymore and he won't get hurt. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Keep in mind, Elaine on multiple occasions has been shown to be someone who cares about animals. The fact that she's down to harm a dog in any way is a huge departure from her established values. This is one of the first directly cruel things Elaine participates in on Seinfeld. I mean, outside of the drugging thing, but she's still obviously conflicted about it. Ew. I don't know. Now I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't do this. I know you'd back out. Right, right, we're doing a bad thing. Hey, look at it this way. We dropped the dog off in front of somebody's house in the country. They find it and adopt it. Now the dog is prancing in the fields. George, by the way, is still riding high. In fact, he even gets engaged at the beginning of season seven. George, what is it? Will you marry me? I'm sure that will go well. And once again, Elaine resents George's success. Doesn't it give you any joy to see your friend enter into this holiest of unions? No, no, no it doesn't. <laughs> it, it should have been me. You know, I'm smart. I'm, I'm attractive. There's a weird moment near the beginning of season seven where this happens. So uh, what'd you do last night? Nothing. I know nothing, but what did you actually do? Literally nothing. I sat in a chair and I stared. <laughs> wow, that really is nothing. I told you. Now this was just a one-off joke, they don't mention it again, but it always seemed very weird and creepy to me. Like Elaine had figured out how to turn off her ambitions and emotions and just sit there staring at the wall. My theory is that the old Elaine died right there in that room. Shortly after that event is the famous soup Nazi episode when Elaine gets banned from a soup restaurant for not following their rules. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. You know something? Mm. No soup for you! Come back! One year! Next! The old Elaine would have probably thrown a tantrum over this. I could see that. But the new Elaine takes it a step further. I don't want soup. I can make my own soup. Five cups chopped porcini mushrooms, half a cup of olive oil, three pounds celery, that is my recipe for a wild mushroom. Yeah, that's right. I got them all. Get through, soup Nazi. Back it up. No more soup for you. <laughs> The guys have left an impression on her. Elaine feels entitled to have her way, entitled to do something when she feels wronged, especially after so much bad luck in her life. But Jerry's entitlement is based in narcissism. George's is based in insecurity, but Elaine's is based in anger. So Elaine's mission is to destroy her enemies. And when she succeeds, you can tell she finds pleasure in it. Folks, evil Elaine is finally here. The only really good thing that has happened to Elaine recently was landing a good job that she actually enjoys and is good at. But the thing about this was that Elaine got this job randomly through no effort or merit of her own. 
It's almost as if the universe was trying to balance itself. At Elaine's lowest moment, she finds her biggest opportunity. And this is what Jerry preaches all the time. Things just kind of work out how they're gonna work out, so it doesn't really matter what you do. And it's being proven by the fact that goobers like Jerry, George, and Kramer get to thrive. I think this pisses Elaine off a little bit. You know, one of these days, something terrible is gonna happen to you. It has to. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be just fine. Speaking of Kramer, he actually notices the change in Elaine, kind of like Jerry did before, but he's a lot more judgmental about it. Boy, I am really surprised at you. You are the last person I figured would do something like this. I mean, George, yeah, I can see that. Even Jerry. <laughs> not you, Elaine. Let's finally talk about Kramer, by the way. Kramer is Jerry's oddball neighbor, and he's definitely the least evil in the group. In fact, he's a pretty friendly person for the most part, but like the others, he's completely self-absorbed and lacks empathy. I can't believe he's in a coma. He's got my vacuum cleaner. <laughs> And also, he's just kind of an idiot, which causes a lot of trouble, usually for other people. Yeah, I got news for you. Handicapped people, they don't even want to park there. They want to be treated just like everybody else. That's why those spaces are always empty. He's right. I don't think Elaine particularly likes Kramer all that much either. Listen, by the way, have you seen a uh, a tall, lanky doofus with a, with a bird face and hair like the Bride of Frankenstein? But I do think Elaine respects Kramer, unlike George. Kramer is always upfront and honest, even and especially when it's not appropriate. <laughs> what? You're getting heavy. <laughs> yeah, you look like you put on five, 10 pounds. Huh? I'll tell you something else, you're looking a little chunky yourself, buddy. But because of that, I think Elaine values his feedback on things. She can count on him to give it to her straight. So she seems genuinely concerned when Kramer calls her out. It turns out Kramer was just manipulating Elaine so she would give him her bike. So if she hadn't emotionally thrown in the towel before, she definitely did after that. And as the show nears its end, we see Elaine do more and more selfish and destructive things and feel less and less guilty about it. She casually fantasizes about murdering people. If he just disappeared, would anybody notice? In one episode, she unknowingly eats a piece of cake that turns out to be a valuable collector's item owned by her boss. A slice of cake from the wedding of King Edward VIII to Wallace Simpson circa 1937. The price? $29,000. But even after finding that out, she eats the whole thing anyway. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Another time, she finds out one of her coworkers is repulsed by her, so she mercilessly taunts the coworker by spreading germs on all her stuff. You think I've got germs? I'll give you some germs. How about some for your keyboard, huh? How about that? Oh, how about for your stapler? Hmm? That's good, isn't it? You have a happy and a healthy. <coughs> And in general, she's just become very mean and vindictive. Yeah, man, you don't like the movie? I hate it! And if she seems stressed out before, it has multiplied tenfold. She doesn't even seem that excited about her dating life. It almost seems like she's just going through the motions. And the bathroom in your apartment? Cleaned it this morning. Uh-huh. The sink, the tub, everything got cleaned? Everything, yeah. Uh -huh. It's spotless. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Most significantly, she has adopted Jerry's cynical idea that the universe has already picked the winners and losers, so you might as well always do what's in your own immediate self-interest. There's no use in working hard or trying to be a good person. And of course, you find fur morally reprehensible. Eh, anti-fur. Who has the energy anymore? <laughs> There's one interesting episode in the final season where Jerry meets a woman who encourages him to express his emotions. Oh, you think I'm lying about this? I think you are. Well, I'm not. Yes, you are, liar. Oh, stop it. Okay, liar. That's enough. Ooh, that was good. Really? It felt good. <laughs> and this has interesting results for Elaine. Oh, it's such a fruit mood. Ah, banana. When all the while, the real secret to happiness has been right here in front of us. What? Elaine. Wait, what's wrong with your leg? <laughs> I'm asking Elaine to marry me. 
This initially makes Elaine very nervous, which is kind of unexpected because it has seemed like she no longer has feelings for Jerry. But maybe this is what she wanted all along. Maybe this is what would make her happy. I mean, Jerry has been her best friend this whole time. All right, Jerome, I'm in. What? Maybe we should get married. I tell you, I don't see it happening. <laughs> what? What happened to the new Jerry? He doesn't work here anymore. That's just great! Yeah, no. But this seemed like a genuine disappointment for Elaine. Like the light came back to her eyes for just a second, only for her to be crushed once again. I've always wanted to see the two of you get back together. Well, that's because you're an idiot. <laughs> she hates George. By the end of the show, Elaine has achieved a high-level career, and she even finds a steady boyfriend, David Putty, who is a decent enough guy, if not a bit simple. But for these benefits, she has traded her values, her optimism, and her mental and emotional well-being. Oh, and by the way, I lied. Her relationship with Putty isn't steady at all. They don't even really seem to like each other all that much, and they break up and get back to together many times. Get those clothes off. You're spending the night working a cuddle. What? You heard me strip. The sad thing is, Elaine seems to understand the impact Jerry and his stupid friends have had on her life, but she's kind of in too deep at this point. She even starts having nightmares about this group she accidentally became a part of. No, I don't want this anymore. We're going to work with you. And on your dates. What? And shopping. And to the bathroom. Elaine. 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 In one episode, she actually finds a new group of friends who are actually kind and respectful. And she ditches Jerry and the gang, thinking maybe this is finally her way out of the Matrix. But remember, she forgot how to relate to normal people a long time ago. Hey, what are you doing? Eating olives. Ever hear of asking? <laughs> Maybe season one Elaine could fit in with this group, but definitely not this Elaine. Fourth row center. Get out! What's the matter with you? And with that, I think the transformation is fully complete. Deep down, I think Elaine might blame Jerry and the group as a whole for her current misery. I'm going somewhere else. You can't do that. You can't just leave the group. I've been trying to leave this group for 10 years. In the final episode of Seinfeld, the group almost gets into a plane crash. Thinking she's about to die, Elaine begins to confess something to Jerry. Jerry! I'm always... Hey, what's going on? We're straightening out. Now, they leave it vague, but it's obvious what she was about to say. What was it you were about to say to me on the plane when it was going down? I've always loved you, knighted. Airlines. I think Elaine did love Jerry, just not in a good way. She was eventually persuaded by his antisocial worldview, which helped her become successful, but also miserable. So yeah, that's about it. I think Elaine is a hilarious character with a tragic arc. If you want to see the reverse of this, where a bad person slowly becomes better over the course of a show, check out my video about Alexis from Schitt's Creek. A link should be on the screen. Okay, bye-bye.